Hello and welcome to the CatVirus.com YouTube channel. My name is Diane Addy. I'm an Honorary Senior Research Fellow at the University of Glasgow Veterinary School. Today I would like to speak to you about the importance of food in the treatment of feline chronic gingival stomatitis. This video is intended for veterinary surgeons but will also be accessible to the average intelligent cat guardian. Feline chronic gingival stomatitis is a painful inflammatory condition of the cat's mouth where the gums or gingivae and the back of the mouth, the palatoglossal folds, are inflamed. It is important to differentiate feline chronic gingival stomatitis from normal uh, gingivitis um, caused by bad teeth because in the latter condition, simply dealing with the teeth um, by good dentistry will cure the condition. On the other hand, getting the diagnosis wrong and giving FGS treatment to a cat who doesn't have FGS can result in death. The etiology of FGS is unclear. Both feline calice virus and the cat's immune response have been implicated. Food is an important aspect of feline chronic gingival stomatitis for two reasons. First, food may be one of the causes of FGS. And second, it's really important to find a food that the cat can comfortably eat. There are many different causes of feline chronic gingival stomatitis, for example, feline calice virus and the cat's immune response have been implicated. But I just want to concentrate on the possible role of food today. And there are two reasons that food could be implicated amongst the other factors causing FGS. The first is that um, the components of the food may cause an allergic or intolerant immune response. And the second is that some foods may cause a micronutrient deficiency um, in the cats with FGS. I first began to consider that food might have a role in the cause of FGS with this cat, Lucky, whose story I published in the Journal of Small Animal Practice. As you can see from this photograph, Lucky had a very painful and inflamed mouth. His referring veterinary surgeon had done everything he could to make him better, including removing most of the teeth and extensive antibiotic treatment. I had been treating him for about a year when he suddenly presented one day with remarkable improvement, as you can see here. He had stopped shedding Khaleesi virus and his mouth was remarkably improved. Since my treatment with lactoferrin and thalidomide had met with only limited success, I, tr I quizzed Lucky's guardian about what had changed in his life and I found that she had changed his food to Butch's classic cat food. I didn't know if this was significant, but at the same time veterinary dentist Lars Tays in the Netherlands reported that cats who'd had their teeth out got better much more quickly if they were being fed Hill's AD diet, so I began to wonder if the food did have some effect. A colleague at the University of Glasgow Dental Hospital thought this was a highly plausible explanation because human beings get an allergic type gingivitis in response to food allergens such as cinnamon. Meet my second case, a cat called Tommy, who was a rescue cat from the south of France, a middle-aged cat in a large household of rescue cats who had been rescued by Dr. Andrew Robertson, to whom I'm grateful for these and some of the following photographs. Tommy had been fed on Royal Canaan dry food and the occasional tin of Felix. Tommy's veterinary surgeon had removed all his teeth and had begun giving him subgingival um, injections of interferon omega, verbigen omega made by Verbac, which has been reported to cure a number of these cases. Tommy improved but nevertheless was still quite inflamed. Within just three or four weeks of changing his food to a raw food called wild kitty cat food from North America, Tommy made a remarkable recovery which he has sustained, though FGS can be caused in him at any time by putting him onto some of the popular uh, dry cat foods such as friskies. And after all these unflattering photographs of Tommy, here's one just to show you what a handsome cat he is. Ok, 
Okay, so we've seen that the first uh, reason that food may be a cause of FGS is because it might contain something that causes an allergic or intolerant immune response. And the second reason is that um, modern foods may be deficient in certain micronutrients that are needed by the cat. It's an accepted fact that humans um, with chronic inflamed gums may lack certain nutrients. In the cat, one such nutrient could be arginine, found in red meat, which is essential for a functioning immune response. And secondly, the modern feline diet, like the modern human diet, may well contain not enough omega-3 oil and too much omega-6. These are aspects that require further investigation. The second reason that food is important in FGS is because the cat has a painful mouth. And it's important that we find a food that the cat uh, finds appetizing and is willing to eat. Meet our third case today, Louis, who has suffered from FGS for many years. And his guardian, Merini, wrote to me to say that he was finding um, eating just too painful to, to do. So while she was uh, obtaining her vet's permission for me to communicate with her, I said go and get some applause uh, cat food just from the supermarket and this is a film she made uh, of Louis. Hi Dr. Addy, I just wanted to show you how Louis is enjoying his applause um, because we were struggling to actually open his mouth to show you the inside. Um, so here's a bowl of Louis' applause and that's Louis waiting patiently for his dinner, very hungry. Come on then. Here he goes. Down he goes. And that's the cat with stomatitis enjoying his dinner. And as you can see, he, he eats the food very comfortably. Like he's never been fed before. <laughs> And there's no running away from the food, there's no pain behaviours. And I don't know if it's because he's, he's learned how to eat it differently or, or what's going on, but he now weighs over four kilograms. He's very happy, very healthy. He's not sad anymore. And whatever it is in the applause, it seems to have worked. I do have to say that unfortunately just changing his food alone did not heal Louis's um, FGS. He needed other treatment as well. So if you're uh, not a vet listening to this video, if you are a guardian, do remember that you need to go see a vet um, and obtain medication for your cat with FGS. So these are my personal guidelines for feeding a cat with feline chronic gingival stomatitis. First, I would avoid most dry foods. And a couple of exceptions I would make to that would be the dry food of applause and Almo Nature, which I have found to be compatible, for example, for Tommy. He can eat those without a resurgence of his clinical signs. My second piece of advice would be to give as much variety as possible. If you could visit my pantry right now, you'd find in there, as well as Alma Nature and Applause wet foods and dry food, you would find uh, kitty cat wet food, whiskers, Felix, um, all kinds of stuff. I give my cats as much variety as possible and I um, give intermittently some raw mince from the supermarket as well. When buying raw food, uh, get organic food if you can, if you have access to that. And cats with FGS will benefit from fish once or twice a week, um, but not too much fish because cats can get vitamin A toxicity. So some cats uh, really prefer dry food to wet food. What, which ones can we use for FGS? Well, I'm pretty keen on applause dry food which is also known as Encore, I believe, uh, as sold by Sainsbury's in the UK. And what I like about this food was that I was uh, talking to Roger Coleman, who's one of the directors of MPM Products one day, 
and I said that I didn't like dry food because most dry foods are 70% carbohydrate and 30% protein, which is the exact inverse of what a mouse would be, what the natural prey of a cat would be. And he listened to that and he went away and came up with the first um, dry food that's 80% protein, 20% carbohydrate. So there aren't a lot of dry food manufacturers out there who are prepared to willing to, uh, to listen to cat loving vets. We'll call this cat Spider, he wants to remain anonymous. And Spider is a cat with periodontitis, which is a preliminary condition that often progresses to FGS. Um, you can see the inflammation uh, uh, around his teeth. And here he is um, a few months after starting applause uh, dry food. Uh, you can see that a lot of the inflammation has gone. So where can we get some of these cat foods? Applause is available in the UK and many countries of Europe uh, and from the website mpmproducts.co.uk uh, or encorecatfood.co.uk Almo Nature again is widely available throughout Europe and their website is www.almonature.eu and broth food wild kitty cat food can be obtained from www.wildkittycatfood.com I'd like to finish by thanking Melody Amundsen for her donation of her web designing skills for catvirus.com I want to thank Roger Coleman, Benedetta Giannini and Stephanie Nadal for donations of their cat foods for uh, cats who are suffering from FGS. I thank veterinary surgeon Jerry Henry who referred the first case Lucky to me and who had done such a wonderful workup on Lucky before he ever reached me. Um, I want to thank Andrew Robertson for his photos of Tommy and indeed for Tommy himself. Uh, who's a, just a wonderful cat and for um, Melanie Williams for being willing to share Louis's story with us and making the film which you saw today and most importantly as well of course I want to thank all the cats who have this is Lucky who up until now you've only seen inside the mouth of uh, I'd like to thank Lucky and his guardian I'd like to thank Tommy um, Louis and Spider and um, I'd like this film to be a tribute to cats everywhere who are suffering from this condition. One of my dreams is to find a cure for chronic gingival stomatitis or to eradicate it completely. For keeping up to date on chronic gingival stomatitis, have a look at my website www.catvirus.com And lastly, thank you for staying with me to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. This is Diane Addy praying for an end to animal suffering. Goodbye.